Hatter Jack is really fun to paint. He is easy because I'm going to break it down step by step and make it super basic and simple. I'm going to show you how I paint it as I paint it and I'm going to use a lot of words and a lot of description and don't worry if you're a beginner and you haven't painted in a million years since you were in school, trust me, I'll make sure that I'll do my best job that I can to make sure that you can paint this and you're going to have an awesome Jack. I'm excited to see your painting. And I also want to say thank you so much for uh, donating and allowing me to continue to do my passion, which is painting and teaching. And thank you so much for your donation. I greatly appreciate it. I recommend using a paper plate. It's way easier to use a paper plate and throw it out at the end as a palette. So that way you don't have to wash anything. I also recommend using some water. I like to use a pitcher. It, it helps me for spills and stuff. It's a lot easier to use and manage. I also go through a ton of paper towels. Because I am using acrylic paint and it is thick bodied, I like to wash and clean my brush every so often and this will help wick up the water, make sure that I don't have extra paint on my brush. The brushes that I like to use and that I recommend uh, pretty much every artist have in their arsenal is a large square brush. Now square is meaning, see how the bristles are like straight and flat and make a square? I recommend having a large one of those. I have, um, I don't know, I guess it's like a medium. It really depends because if you're using a large canvas, this could these can, could consider to be small brushes if I was using a really large canvas. If I was using a smaller canvas, these would be really large brushes. So just a bunch in different sizes is great. This one is a round. So there is a square and a round. I also like to use my small square, which is the exact same as this one. It's just smaller and it's square. It's got a straight line on the end. I will be using a small liner brush for details and my handy dandy bright filbert. Now I love this brush. I use it quite often. Uh, the reason why it's called a bright is because it's um, the bristles are like really tight and compacted together. Uh, this is the brush handle here. Um, this is called a ferrule and then these are the bristles. Well the ferrule has a ton of bristles and it's all tight and compacted in there and I just I like it. It's not like like see how these are like long and they're really bendy and stuff. Well this one is not and it's also called a filbert because it is not a square and it is not a round. It's kind of a little bit of both. So these are the ones that I plan on using today. If you don't have these brushes, don't worry, use, your, use what you got. I will be using acrylic paint. Acrylic paint for me just seems to be easier. It dries faster, but the thing with acrylic paint is sometimes it can dry a little too fast. So you need to hurry really quickly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I have already sketched out my Im image onto the canvas and you can change your image however you want. If you don't want him to have a bow tie, he doesn't have to have a bow tie. But this is the image I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna show you really easy how to paint or draw. If you haven't painted a long time and you're not sure, use a, pe a pencil and a paper, just make, or a pencil and an eraser, but just make sure that you don't puncture any holes into your canvas. The canvas I'm using today is a 16 by 20, and it is a stretched canvas over a wood frame, and you can see how it's been stapled in. This is my preferred canvas that I, I like. It's just, it's easier to hang, it's lightweight, I don't need extra pieces, I don't have to buy a frame, just way easier for me, so this is what I choose. Uh, if you have a flat one, those are great too, just, you know, if you're gonna hang it on the wall, you're either going to need to frame it or maybe attach Velcro to the wall or whatever to get it to stick. Um, but then flat frames are easier to ship, so it's kind of, they've all got pluses and minuses. Now I always like to put my name on the back of the painting. That's how I sign my paintings. You don't have to do that. Um, that's just me. I, I like to do it in a Sharpie and that's my style. Okay, so let's get going with this. Uh, 
with this painting, I want to make sure that I got everything lined up in the camera so you can see it nicely. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my small liner brush. Now, if you are super brave and you want to push your skill, I recommend using a brush and painting with me. However, if you're a little timid, go ahead and just use a pencil. It's all great. I'm going to dip a little bit of paint. Now, I'm not putting my paint all the way into the end of the ferrule here, the end of the bristles. I'm just at the very tip. Very tip, tip, tip. Okay, so take a deep breath and don't stress. The first thing that I recommend that we do is that we do the head. And once we do that, then we'll have a framework for all the other pieces. So I think that Jack looks really cool when his head is round. Some people, when they paint him, they don't do a round head. And that's cool. It's just a different look. That's all that is. So go ahead and ride in the middle of your canvas, pretty much the middle of the middle. Make a circle. Don't worry if it's bumpy and it's not perfect. Don't worry about that. We're going to paint, 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 and trust me, it will happen. So see how I'm making a circle? I've made a comma here, and I'm going to make another comma. So it's a circle that has not been connected. So I've made a letter C. And then I've made a reverse C. Okay, so now let's do the neck. So the neck is going to come straight down on both sides. And there we go. Okay, so now since we got the two C's and the straight lines coming down, let's make a triangle. Now this triangle is going to be the knot where we make his uh, where we make his bow tie. See how that's a triangle and it's pointing down. Okay, so now let's make another triangle. I'm gonna make the edges rounded and not sharp. Do you see how that's a triangle? Bigger triangle, smaller triangle. Now let's try to do the same thing over here. Now to give it character, I'm gonna have my triangle kind of come off of the canvas itself. I wanna make sure that it has some kind of a character to it. And this is just gonna make the, the image a little more visually stimulating that the triangle isn't um, exactly perfect because then it'll feel like it's too staged. Now I like to, um, to paint around the sides of my canvas. You don't have to do that, but I prefer to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap it around with that color. And trust me, this one is not going to look pretty right away, okay? It's going to take a while until it really gets there to the aha moment. Okay, so we have the hat. The, we have everything going to this point. Now, the hat's going to be really cool. I'm going to make sure I'm lined up in the camera so you can see me, what I'm doing. All right. So the hat. Remember how we made the two C's that faced each other? Now, we're going to make a line here at the top. And it's kind of going to be a smiley face. But it's going to be kind of flat when it comes to the front of Jack's face. Do you see how that's a smiley face right there? All right. So now... Let's try to make that smiley face a little bit wide. 
So we're going to add another little smiley face on top of that smiley face. And it's rounded on the side. So smiley space, smiley face, C, backwards C, two straight lines down, a triangle, a triangle, and another triangle. You're doing really good. So now let's do the top of the hat. So this is going to, up here is going to be a space where it's like a fabric going around the top hat. So I am going to make mine a little bit bumpy just to give it character. Right there, do you see how I kind of made a frowny face almost? So smiley face, smiley face, frowny face. Now I'm going to allow the line to go straight up and kind of diagonal because it wants to open up a little bit. There we go. And the hat is kind of so tall like Lincoln that it goes off the canvas. Now he does have some pins because the Mad Hatter has pins. I mean, this is Jack, right? But it's also a Mad Hatter Jack. And the Mad Hatter, he was... Um, he was a seamstress and he did a lot of that kind of stuff. So of course he's going to have some pins for what he needs. So I'm going to go straight up here, but I'm going to leave some space for those pins. I don't want to cover them up. I'm going to make the pins yellow. And this is the basic outline of the idea of what we're doing with Jack. So I'm going to go ahead and do his eyes. Now his eyes are round, but they're not perfect round. They're kind of oval, almost eggy kind of. So I'm going to get come in here and do a circle. One circle, and I'm going to come over here and do another circle. Right there, two circles. Okay, so now he's got a nose. I'm going to make one of his little nostrils a little bit bigger than the other. It almost looks like a piece of candy, like a jelly bean. Two little jelly beans right there, and that's his nose. Let's go ahead and do his mouth. Now his mouth is closed, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a straight line first. And it kind of has a little bit of a bump to it. And if you put the bump, what that's, what's going to happen with that is that it's going to give him some kind of like a smirk and a like little smile. You could just go and do a smiley face if you want to. That's totally cool. I've seen many Jacks with just a smiley face and they look great. But I'm going to give my guy a little bit of a, like he knows something kind of a look. Be careful when you put your hand down that you're not touching black everywhere. For this Jack, I'm going to not make his mouth go all the way to the end. Otherwise, he's going to have a really huge mouth. It could be cool and scary-like, but I'm going to just leave it there, and I'm not going to connect on this side with the line. 
So now what I'm gonna do is the up and down marks. Oh, ooh, see what happened to me? I got a little bit of black. Ooh, don't do that, because then you smear it all over your painting, and you don't want that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna do these lines straight up and down. And they got character. Each one of these lines, it's the same basic idea, but they all kind of have a different angle and a little bit of a slant to them. And it really depends on how you make your mouth, like how crooked and where everything goes. So just let it feel natural. There we go. I'm liking that so far. It really good. Now, trust me, it's not going to, it's going to take a while for everything to come together but when it does it's going to be like really super cool so continue with the drawing if you're ready to move on like i am at this moment i'm going to go ahead and fill in the eyes with black i'm going to go ahead and use my little brush i'm liking it it's working for me if you would like to use a bigger brush at this moment you can but this little guy for me is working just fine We are going to use other colors in the painting. Um, I'm mostly just doing this part at the moment so that way I can help you to figure out how to draw in Jack onto your canvas. I like to make circles in my eyes. I feel like when I do that, the brush strokes come out really super cool. I like, yeah, I like to do it in big circles. First, I apply the paint and I work rather quick. And by doing it kind of quickly, it uh, I'm able to then go back when I'm done and re-swirl it and get the brush strokes all going the way I want them to. I'm also applying them in a circle as I go. You kind of need to work fast with acrylics a little bit. Uh, with oils, you can take your time longer. They're going to take forever to dry. There we go. I like those circles. Those are nice circles. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Uh, if you're not to this point yet, don't worry about that. You can always pause the video. Okay, so now I'm going to work on my two little smiley faces, and I'm going to fill them in. coming along really nice going really fast too all right so now it's the top of the hat now remember how I said earlier that the Mad Hatter he was a seamstress and he had the pins I'm gonna make sure that I don't color them in I'm kind of gonna draw them a little bit and just not paint where they're gonna be I'm gonna make sure that I'm still you can see me okay yeah. Okay. Make sure everything's good. Yep. 
You know what, just to make things a little bit easier on myself for the next like three minutes, I'm just gonna flip the painting over really quick just to help me so that way, because otherwise I'm gonna have to be all over the camera and you won't be able to see me anyways painting what I'm doing and I don't wanna block it. So I'm just gonna do this really quickly to get it over with. And I go ahead and do the top hat. Now I know that the, the, the Mad Hatter has a green hat. I'm well aware of that. I am gonna choose to do green for the background and his hair is gonna be red. So it's too much green, right? And I don't want it to start looking like Christmas, which is totally cool for Jack, cause you know, Nightmare Before Christmas and all that. Um, but it wasn't really Christmassy, you know, it was more Halloween. So I'm just gonna, I'm making the top hat black. Kind of pop arting it a little bit. And also the colors that I use, you can make your own, whatever colors you want. If you want him to have a pink hat, go for it. He might look really awesome in a pink hat. Whatever colors you want to use, go for it. Because I totally want, I'm hoping and I'm, Really, really strongly hope that when you're done with your painting that you would be gracious enough to share it with me and with the group and let us all see your cool, awesome creation. And I don't know, hopefully somebody will go out of the box a little bit and really make something that's like, oh, I wish I would have done that. I didn't think about that cool idea. Okay, so now for the pins. I've already pre-drawn them, so I have a basic idea of where I want them to go. So I'm going to paint where they are not. When it comes to doing this, I remember you the little fine details. I recommend using a tiny fine little detail brush. That'll be way easier. You'll get a better result. Also, when you're painting, I strongly recommend taking a moment and turning your canvas around so you can see it from different angles and get different perspectives on your piece. Um, also, every so often, I like to walk away from my painting to see it from a distance. I'll prop it up against the wall. I have, right now, my table that I'm working on is up against the wall. There's a window right over there in the front of me, and I have a wall to the side of me as well. It's kind of in the corner. So I can prop up my painting there, walk to the other side of the room, and I can see it. Um, I prefer not to paint with easels. If you have one, great. Uh, when I was in the university, we very rarely ever used easels. We only really used easels when we were uh, painting a subject in which we were looking up and staring at. Uh, a live subject. But for the most part, we used uh, drafting tables when I was at the university. So I don't know that because that's how I was trained. That's just it's I feel I feel more comfortable using a table. But the problem with a table is that you only get the perspective from the angle that you're sitting. So that's why every so often I have to get up and and like look at it from a distance. But I just feel so much more comfortable. I'm able to, I feel like when I'm at a table, my arms don't get as tired and I'm able to last longer with my paintings. I do do this as a profession. This is uh, my sole income is, is uh, painting. And so I'm doing around two to three, sometimes four paintings a day. And when I am painting on an easel, I get really fatigued and tired.
I'm painting the side of my canvas. I'm just, since I have the black out, I might as well. Now, if you don't want to paint their sides, you don't have to. It'll give it a look where it's unfinished, and that look is totally cool. I just, I, I don't know. I, I tend to like the finished look in the sense that because this is my profession, uh, I, I show at a lot of galleries. Uh, I do a lot of uh, craft fairs and different things, and and I've just noticed. And for me, I tend to sell more paintings when they are when the sides are painted. It just seems to work out better that way. People are more interested, so I kind of just got into the habit of doing it. Right, make sure I get that corner really nice and that edge working. Okay, this is looking really good, I like it. So I'm gonna flip it over, we're gonna see what we got. Now don't worry if, you're, can't, if your painting is like just not eh, like it's lacking, don't worry, it's the first time. I've painted this painting several times, so it's this is why I'm able to, you know, he looks like Jack, because I've had a lot of practice with him. So if it doesn't work out, don't worry about it. You can always watch this video again and try again. I feel like every time I draw them, I get better at it. So I'm cleaning my brush, getting all that black out. I'm going to take a quick moment and I'm going to use my handy dandy hair dryer. So that way I can hurry up and go to the next step. Um, if you are able to, you could just, you know, let it sit for the night and then come back. But then... If you do that, try not to like not be like to be away from your painting too long. Try to get it done because I have a lot of students who start and then they never finish their paintings. So if you're gonna do it, do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my hair dryer and I'll know that it's completely dry when my painting is no longer shiny.
right. So it's not super, super dry. I see tons of shiny stuff everywhere. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm going to, okay. So I'm, I'm thinking that it would just be totally cool to have a green background. That's just, I'm feeling that vibe. Go ahead with whatever color you want, but I'm going to do green because I think it's cool. Um, and it'll reflect the Mad Hatterness. Um, now, when using the green, like right here, it's a little bit wet. There's a little bit of wet here too. When I go to brush, it might pull some of the black out. And uh, be careful with that. Unless, I mean, that could be cool. It could totally be a really awesome happy accident. I feel like that I try to have happy accidents because then that's when the painting comes out super awesome. But the happy accidents will not happen if you're stressing out. You have to be relaxed and have a good time and enjoy yourself. And if you're not enjoying yourself, you're not going to get happy accidents. And happy accidents are what makes paintings extra special and awesome. So relax, calm your monkey mind, and have fun. So because I'm working with acrylics, I personally prefer to get my paint out as I go so that way it stays moist and wet longer for a longer period of time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a bright green uh, on my palette. I just, I just take out a little bit and I apply to the sides. Notice how it's all the sides. So all your main colors want to be on the outside of your plate. And I, I kind of spilled right there. That was an accident. But it, it's I'm letting it dry. And this is where I put white. So if you ever at any time you want to use white, put it in the middle of your palette. And all of your hues that you're using, your colors, put them around the edge. This means that there's like a center area of this plate in the between the white and the other colors where you can use as mixing. So I'm applying my green to the side of the plate. I'm going to choose to use my big square brush. I feel like it's just going to go faster and it's going to give me the brush strokes that I want. I like the square. You can use whatever brush you want, but for this technique, the square for me seems to work way better. Okay. So, oh, got paint. Keep, uh, keep yourself like so you don't have paint all over your stuff. You don't want to accidentally do what I did right here. See this? And then I don't want to wipe that all over my canvas. So make sure that you don't got paint everywhere. All right. So this technique is going to go really super fast. What I'm doing is I'm going to apply paint and push it off at the same time. Also, I've noticed that... I really like my paintings to have a lot of brush strokes in them. I'm really into the brush stroke look because I'm not trying to make a photograph. I'm trying to make a painting. I want it to look like a painting. So I'm going to come up here with my brush and I'm going, and also I do prefer to turn my canvas as I'm doing this. I find it makes things way easier for me if I turn my canvas. So I would recommend that you do the same thing as well. It also gives me a different vantage point. Okay, so I've got my green, I got my brush, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to take a little bit of paint. I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to paint on the side just because I have it and it's there. Already get the paint down. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go super, super quick. And I'm just going to brush and wipe as I go. And I'm going to try to do it in all the different directions. So that way I got brush strokes going everywhere. Right, left, up and down, all over the place. The more brush strokes, the better. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, and with the hair, I, it's a blob. It's just the big, happy blob. So I'm going to try to not paint on the blobby areas. 
If I go into my black a little bit, that's okay because black is easy to just cover up all the colors. So I'm not going to stress out, of, oh no, I got the paint on the black. Just let it be. Let it happen. No stressing. If you're stressing in my class, then I'm going to give you an F and you're going to fail. But if you have a good time and you relax and you get all of your anxieties and stresses out onto the canvas and by the end of the painting you are happy and collected, then that means you get an A plus and you win. I want a lot of people that are going to win, okay? I don't want anybody to fail my class. You're going to win and you're going to have a good time and you're going to leave all the worries of the world outside of my classroom, okay? No worries are allowed to enter this space. So if anybody's bullying you or anything, tell it to Jack. Jack wants to hear all about it. And he wants to take your stress away and he's going to deal with it for you so that way you don't have to and you can to use your time more productively and wisely and hang out with your family and love your people instead of spending all that time and energy stressing about stupid dumb stuff that who cares whatever you know it's just it's a bottle ugh. so let it go. Take a moment. I'm gonna be really quiet here for a second and I want you to hear your brush stroke. And with each and every little brush stroke that you do, I want you to feel, to hear the sound of all of your anxieties and stresses going away. Every little brush stroke you make, it's bye-bye. That's your problems telling you bye-bye. I don't got time right now. So turn off your music, be quiet for like maybe five minutes, and let's just hear the sound of our beautiful brushes making all of our anxieties, worries, and stresses go away.
If you need to, to make it easier on yourself, go ahead and turn your canvas. No need to stress or uh, your arm or, your, or hurt your neck. Don't get a kink in your neck or anything. Just turn your canvas as you need it. Just checking in right now. How are you doing with our little meditation? Are you feeling better? I want to remind you to calm your monkey mind and just let the paint go. Let the brush move. Zone out for a minute. Don't stress. This should be the easiest part of the whole painting.
How are you doing? Did you zen out? I totally did. I feel like I gave my brain a little bit of a break, like a nap. I feel really good. I feel energized and ready to go for more. I hope you feel good too. I am woman, hear me roar. Roar! I did it! Oh, I did it! It's great! It's lovely! Yeah, I did that! You did it! We did it together! You did it! You did awesome! Yes! Oh, I feel so much better. I got all my stress out onto the canvas. Whew. I feel better. I'm ready. I am so ready for the next thing. Okay, so I didn't paint green here on purpose because I'm going to make him his little body. I think I might add little arms, but that's okay. If I do, I'm going to do it in black, so it's going to overlap, so it'll be fine. Okay, so let's see. So there are so many choices and options as to what we can do next. There's so many cool ideas. I'll make sure I'm all lined up here on the camera so make sure you can see everything I'm doing. Okay. I'm gonna go wash my brush. Now this big square brush, I don't really think I'm going to uh, use it again for this painting. I think I'm pretty done with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash it really good in the water. And then uh, I like to, okay, so here, I'm going to show you. So I wash it in my water, right? And then I like to, um, yes, I'm using a pitcher. I like the pitchers. I bend the bristles just a little bit, and it kind of gets some of that excess moisture out. And then I have my paper towel, and I take it, and I wipe. And then I turn it, and I wipe again on a different spot. Now, never ever push, okay? Don't ever push with your brush. You're gonna ruin your bristles. It's gonna be ick. I've had this paint, this brush now for quite a lot of paintings. I've actually lost count, but I, I think I'm in the 20s. And that's because I take care of my brushes. You take care of your stuff, it'll last. Okay, so um, I also, I'm washing it and cleaning it now, putting it to the side. And then I like to go here and just kind of push, pull, put them into little nice pretty points. It's just something I do. I uh, put it to the side. By washing it now and not having it sit in my water for a long time, it's just going to make the bristles last longer and be nicer. Also, those bristles, um, these are, um, oh, I forgot the name. I'm having a brain fart. Oh, I want to say acrylic. But they're synthetic. They're synthetic bristles. They tend to last a little bit longer in acrylics. Okay, so let's go. So we can do many things. We can do the hair, we can do the pins, we can do the hat. Hmm, what do I want to do? Let's go ahead and make the hair really cool. Why not? Okay, so I'm going to take just a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and dry the green really well so that way when I'm doing the hair that it's not like mixing in together so I, I can have like sharp colors sharp uh, lines with my colors <laughs> Good. 
Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of red onto my palette. Oops, added too much. Right here to the edge of my palette. And I'm going to go ahead and choose to use my Bright Filbert. I like this one. It's a really nice brush. And let me make sure I'm lined up here. Okay. Yep, good to go. And I'm going to have a really good time and hang out. And Okay, so the only thing is I would recommend to... It's okay if you go over the black line. We can always paint over it and crisp it at the end. But try not to go into a space. Like, try to keep that area white. So I'm just gonna, just gonna add the little, little pieces of hair. Now, if you had not, if when you were painting the sides, you did not, you went all the way and you painted all this green, uh, I would recommend to put down a base coat of white first to figure out where the hair is going to go. Let it dry, and then once it dries all the way thoroughly, otherwise if you don't let it dry, you'll get a pink. And then add the red, you'll have an easier time. It'll come up better, it'll be sharper, especially if you're using cheaper quality paint that has a lot of water in, in the paint. Uh, yeah, I choose, I am a thick thick body painter type person so like I don't add a lot of water to my paint only when I really need to thin it out um yeah so don't add water to your paint now I'm going from his head and I'm almost thinking of it like a sun I'm going out from the head to the points now if you notice I'm doing it in a way in which I'm getting a lot of brush strokes and this is going to be really cool because it's going to show fibers in the hair. See that? It's showing like there's extra little, little, um, like little hairs, you know, little lines. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, if you want to go ahead, turn on some music or something. Maybe you're already listening to something cool. Um, the only reason that I don't have music is just solely because I have so many people that watch my class. And, well, take my class, really. I have so many people and everybody has so many different tastes in music. Um, I like all kinds of music. I, I can, one day I'll be all hip-hop, the next day I'll be all into country. I'm like back and forth everywhere, um, but I didn't want to make you like listen to music you don't want to listen to, so that's why I don't have music. Uh, if I'm in the art studio completely all by myself, well, when I do my classes and stuff, like when I'm doing them in person, I always have music. I like to have something cool. One of my rules is that it has to be a positive song though, like I don't listen to any negativity or dramas, like I don't put on the news or anything when I'm painting. So if you're gonna listen to music, I'd recommend just listen to good music. You know what would be really cool with this one is to listen to the soundtrack of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Maybe Alice in Wonderland, um, but it's not really Halloween-y music. It's more opera from back in the day, from the 40s.
right now I am applying base coat colors and so if you haven't painted since high school and you're just or you're just not that good and you you're not really your whole heart isn't into this then I would recommend just stopping with base coats and letting it be what it is um, but if you want to really push yourself and actually you know work and really get this painting going I will be, once my base coat's dry, like with the green, I will be adding more green in here. I will go over the hair again, second, third time. And the more layers and that I put on this painting, the cooler and more 3D it's gonna get. Uh, but right now I am doing everything that's the basics of the beginning basics. And these are called, these are called, it's called laying down the base coat. Which can also be cool. You can really, I mean, this is still cool. It's working. See, what did I tell you? I knew that you were going to be good enough to be able to do this painting. I'm sure you had a moment there where you're like, <gasps> that's really hard. But now, we just break it down step by step, one step at a time. And he's coming together, isn't he? It was taking a little bit, but uh, he's coming. It's happening. The more you push yourself, the better you're going to be. Painting is something that I consider that I'm practicing with every painting. Even though I've painted this guy a bunch of times and I've been painting for many years, I still take it to, I, I still am sitting down and being like, okay, how can I make this one better than the last one that I already did? You know, so I'm also in here with you. I'm working it just like you're working it also. Trying to see how I can improve and become better at this. So don't stress. It, it might take a little while until we start getting to the end phase where everything really starts coming together and he really, it starts popping and working. Just takes a minute. A lot of my success, I think, as to why Jack is really looking like Jack is that when I drew him and I sketched him out, I, I kind of did. I didn't fret with all the little details, but I still kind of took a moment to really think about it and where am I going to put what and how is it just all going to fit in there. And I think that's translating to success right now that I took a moment when I drew sketch, well, drew sketch, I mean, Sketching is more like, I don't know, I feel like I didn't, sketching is more I feel when you go into a lot of detail and really work at it, whereas drawing is more just the basics, I guess. And so when I was drawing them out, I actually did, I put some thought into where I was going to put what. And so now that I have my roadmap down, I'm like, oh, okay, got it.
There we go. Beautiful. I like it. Yes. It's coming together. Okay, so from here, well, there's many things we can do. I think that it would be a good opportunity to work on the sash that goes around the hat. Now, in the Tim Burton one, the sash is kind of like a light brown, a uh, beigey color. And in the original Disney one, it's more of a pinky color. Kind of off whitey. Yeah, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and make mine pink. I understand. I get it. He's a boy. But I'm going to go with some pink. Now, how I'm going to achieve that, because I've already have, have a lot of uh, red on my canvas or on my palette. I don't want to go and dump out some pink on my palette because I want to save my paint. So I already got plenty of red I, I won't use a whole lot of. I'm going to add the white to the middle of my canvas. A little bit over here. Yep, that should be more than plenty. Remember how I said about using the middle area to mix? I'm going to bring some of that. Oh, I, I accidentally got paint on the bottom of my plate. I'm going to take some of that red and come over here and mix it. And it's going to make a pink. Now, the more white you use, the lighter shade of pink you're going to get. The more red that you add, the darker your pink will be. Now, I'm going to put her up a notch a little bit. Instead of just straight doing the whole thing pink, I have a really light pink that I've mixed. So I'm going to use the opportunity right now to make sure that I do this area. Now, this is going to be the area where there is a highlight. So the highlight is where it's a light area and the light is bouncing off of it. So we're going to be like the shininess of the light. This is a similar technique to when, like when I paint humans uh, in skin, I use a lot of this idea of what I'm showing you here. Same basic ideas, concepts. I'm sorry if you can hear that. My neighbor has a parrot and a couple other birds. She's got like this white bird that's really noisy. And she likes to talk a lot when nobody's paying attention to her. And it's not my bird. So it's not like I'm going to be like, hey bird, can you be quiet? <laughs> so if you hear a bird squawk and that's what's going on. Sorry if it's annoying. I think it's kind of cool though, hearing the bird. Okay, so I've got my little strip here of, of pink. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some more red and make that pink a little bit darker. So I'm adding more red into this pink. The more red that I add, the darker this pink will start becoming. Try to mix enough of it that I'm going to need. And let's see how it looks. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, much better, huh? Go ahead and work it. Working a little bit quickly. I'm going to use that color and go to the other side. This is also a good technique to use if you were doing maybe like a sunset over the water. Like a beach scene or something. This is a good way to make those colors. Of the wall. I mean, obviously you wouldn't use pink, but you know, where I'm placing the color, it's like the good shine of the reflection of the water. Okay, so I've got like that, right? So now because I worked really quick, I'm going to wipe off my brush, get all that paint color off, and I'm going to go really quick, and I'm going to try to blend here in the middle. 
Blendy blend, 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 blend. Blendy blend. Blend, blend, blend. And I'm gonna go to the other side and blend the other side. Now, the more you're working the blend, the more even the tone's gonna start looking. If you like the look where it's kind of half finished, I would recommend not blending as much. I'm going back down here and see how I'm not going back and forth between all the areas. I'm just kind of a little bit here and there, like little, little columns, like little tiny. I want to keep some of that true light pink that I have. Now I kind of don't have any more of that light pink. So I want to be very careful that I don't use it up over here when I'm working my blend so that I still have some of that pink from the original. See what I'm doing? Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in with some actual red and do the ends. I'm gonna be really, I'm just gonna apply it right now. And then after I apply it, then I'm gonna go with the brush marks and blend. I wanna make sure that I have a sharp edge there. Okay, so now being very careful that I have a sharp edge, I'm gonna blend and work it in. I like it, it works. I'm gonna quickly dry, wipe off my brush a little bit. And then do another little column going down to blend the color. Remember, the more you work it, the more even these tones are gonna get. I am doing impressionism, so on purpose, I'm gonna kinda try to not, you know? I'm gonna, I want the colors to change and to fade, but I still want it to look like it's not super perfect. Like, I'm on purpose, do not, I, my painting, I don't want my painting to look like a photograph. I want it to look like an actual painting. So I wanna see them brush strokes, those little, pieces of imperfection of the painting, which to me are the perfection. I'm gonna make sure, here, let me just go and apply some color just so I have it down. I'm gonna work really quick because I have a larger area to work with. Right here. All right, okay, so now let me get it down and then I can start blending. I've got to work really fast. Okay, that's good. That works. I'm going to wipe off my brush, get all that color off. And I'm going to blend this little area to try to connect the colors. Okay, so wipe off all, and then I'm just going to go back here and try to get some nice, pretty red brush strokes going. Notice how I've been going horizontal, and I'm not really making vertical strokes. I like that look. I feel like it gives it some kind of consistency with the movement. There we go. And there you have it, a fade. Love it, I like it, I'm happy with it. I really like it, it was good. You did really good, I'm proud of you. Okay, so let's see. I'm thinking that maybe he would, let's see. What next, what next? Um. I want to go ahead and let the hair dry all the way before I continue. We can work on here. Let's work on the bow tie while we're waiting for everything to dry. Okay, so there are many options and choices when it comes to the bow tie. You can follow what I'm doing 
Or you can just, you know, make it up, really, honestly. Uh, you can, if you are scared about painting and you don't think you're going to do a good job here. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I'm in the view of the camera. I can't really see it. It's not, my little stand here is not giving me a good, I have to see it from an angle. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if you're like really stressed out and you're like, I can't do this, it's not going to happen, I'm not that good at what I'm doing, then just go ahead and just make it one color. You know, just apply one color, it's fine, it works. I am going to take it a step further and I'm going to add all of the little circles that are in here. Uh, and you can really choose pretty much any colors you want, really. I'm starting to think that I want to go with a blue. So that's the color that I'm going to use. I'm going to add a little bit of blue. I don't need a lot of blue for this. Um, to the side here. Okay. So I'm still going to use my bright filbert brush. I really like this guy. Very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and go make some circles. You know, just, I'm not going to paint over where the circles are. I'm going to try to paint around them. But just be kind of, like, odd where you put them. Like, just randomly weird spots. Like, for example, I put three here. And in each circle, I put another little tiny circle in it. So, since I've already drawn it out, I'm just going to go ahead and apply my blue paint. I feel that using the smaller brush gives me, um, I'm a little, little bit more accurate with what I'm doing. Just working on them brush strokes. Okay, that works. I'm gonna go over here and do the same exact thing. Now I'm gonna be very, it's, if I go over the black, it's okay because we can come and fix that later, but I'm gonna be very particular, especially with this blue. I wanna make sure that I don't go into the green at all because then it's, it's gonna be so hard to cover up that green or the, the blue, because the blue is such a cool color, and the green is a lot warmer of a color. I am trying to do it in a way that my brush strokes are going from one side of the triangle to the other so that they're all kind of in a row just because I think that'll look cool in the end. It does take a little extra effort but it's kind of like the idea of like when the lawn is mowed and like you go in like straight lines you kind of can for a day for about a couple hours you can see those marks in the grass how it's all in like a row. That's kind of what's gonna, this type of paint, it, uh, the one, the paint I'm using, it really shows up, especially with the blue. 
it'll show up nicely and it'll give it a cool look. Now, the more you work on the blue and put layers and let it dry and put more layers, these brush strokes will go away. So if that's the look that you're going for, I would say um, allow your the paint to dry after so long so that way uh so that way it um you know because like if it's wet paint and you're just trying to put more paint on the wet paint it's not going to stay on the canvas I go ahead and do the sides too just because I like the look. Bring it over the side. Okay, while the paint's still wet, I'm going to go one more time just to make sure that I got all these lines going in a good direction. Yep, I like it. He's coming along. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. I like him. All right, so we're going to go here. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I've had so many happy accidents happening with this painting. And I'm really, because of that, I think my painting is extra special and cool now. I'm like really into this one. Originally, I was thinking, yeah, no, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll sell it in the gallery. But now I'm kind of like, no, I'm liking this one. I want to keep it. Sometimes I have withdrawals with some of my paintings. I like them too much. And I'm like, no, I don't want to get rid of that one. It's a good painting. So um, let's talk about some stuff here. Uh, hanging art in a gallery is a good way to not do a whole lot of work when it comes to talking to customers to buy your paintings. However, uh, some galleries can charge a lot of money in the sense that percentages are kind of high versus if you were to go to like a craft fair and sell them yourselves. Uh, some craft fairs can be also very expensive too. It really depends. Um, so around where I live here is a tiny little town and the going rate is 35% of the sale, which is actually pretty good, not bad. Um, but I'd rather not, honestly. 
I mean, I did all the work, right? And so if you're shy and you're scared and you can't talk to customers to buy your art and you're too timid, then maybe, yeah, it's it's worth paying. Like, uh, I know Key West, a lot of those galleries down there, um, they charge 65% of sale. Um, so in LA, it's very common for that, for that big cities, basically. Um, it's quite a few galleries in Manhattan that I've worked with. That, um, that want around 50%. It seems to be going great right in Manhattan from what I've found. Um, so if you can get 35% or less when it comes to a gallery, you're doing good. That's a good number. Okay, so I like it. He's cute. I'm going to give this a minute to dry before we go with our other colors because then, you know, so they'll mix and like, I'm going to put some yellows in there and stuff, and it'll turn green. It's not really what I want. So uh, at this time, I'm going to take a quick moment, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to add some uh, yellow onto my palette. I don't need a lot, just a little bit. Like, really, just a little. And uh, just to make things a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and flip my canvas so I don't have to strain my neck or my arm. And I have a lot of wet paint. I don't want to accidentally with my arm go whoops and get paint all over the place. So it'll be easier. I'm going to go ahead and paint in the, um, paint in the, uh, uh, the needles. Because the Mad Hatter, he's the same stress. Gonna lay it on kind of thick. Now this this one is round. This one is round and straight and pointy. Now this one is a triangle. Do you see this triangle I'm making right here? It's a triangle followed by a line, followed by a little dip that would go to my right. So first to make this little triangle, it's pointy. And then we're gonna do the straight line that goes down. Okay, so now here, it's a straight line that goes down, but it kind of curves a little bit to the right. It's good, I like it, it's working. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here. It's wide down here and it gets a little bit skinny and the tip is kind of very similar to the other one. Comes to a point at the top. There we go. Now, if you had painted over all this area and you didn't leave white canvas, it's going to take many coats to cover that black with some yellow. You, uh, I would recommend painting white first over it, letting it sit, letting it dry completely, and then going back over and painting yellow. That'll help you a lot faster versus painting yellow and then painting yellow again and then again. So just paint white. And then when you got it and it's dry and you got what you like, then go back over that with some yellow and it'll be a lot faster and a lot easier to achieve the look you're trying to go for. Okay, so I've got that so far. Let's see, I feel like he needs some stuff going on with his eyes. Yep, he does. Let's see. Let's give him some uh, little shadowing. Now this is where things are gonna come together and it's gonna start working awesome and pretty cool. 
I'm gonna go ahead and I have a light purple that I'm gonna use. And I just need the tiniest amount, just a little. Okay. Now I'm gonna to wanna to dilute that purple with uh, with color before I do the eyes. And so I just thought to myself, maybe it's better if we take a moment and do the circles. Uh, you know what? I wanna do the circles, but they're still shiny. I'm gonna give it a few seconds with the hair dryer before I do the circles. brush. I noticed I had a little bit of green down here. I just want to touch that up really quick. There we go. Okay. Wipe, clean my brush. Now I'm going to use the purple and I'm going to be very sparing and I'm going to go in circles. Now I do want to make circles inside of circles. So be, I am going to go ahead and just make this guy purple. Go ahead and make the colors, the circles, whatever colors you want. I'm choosing purple for the moment. Gonna lay the paint on rather thick. Circle, circle, circle. Where should these circles be? I'm just making it up. I'm just wherever I feel that would be cool. Hmm. All right, I think. I'm going to let that, well, mm, I'm going to do one more purple over here. Okay, that looks good for now. Um, I'm going to choose, let's see, what color would be great? Let's go with some red. I'm going to take some red and I'm going to pick, pick a red and that one's just going to be red just because to be different. They don't all have to have a circle inside of them. Looks good. I like it. Let's see. I feel like I should put another red one over here somewhere. Got a little red, white, and blue vibe going on. 
Okay. <laughs> I like it. It's coming good. What color? Let's add some green. Green would be really cool, wouldn't it? We did purple. Oh, we could do it. No, we're going to do blue. Hmm. Pink. No, green. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and just dab it on. Ooh, it's looking nice. I like it. I'm going to put a little green one right here. Okay, it works. So now, what color should I put here, huh? Don't know, I don't know. I have no idea what I want to put there. Hmm. I feel like I shouldn't put green or red. Could put purple. How about I go really cool and make that guy yellow? Make him a big spotty yellow. That's cool, huh? Yeah. Little off kilter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more, but I really need this colors to dry, the purple to dry really good before I do the centers of the circle. I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to do the dots in the middle of the purple. Yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel, kind of diagonal a little bit. So they are almost complete uh, contrasting colors. They're, they're not, but they're, they kind of are. And so they look really good up close together. That's why I chose to do yellow in the middle. Oh, it was just enough paint, too. Really like that. Like it when I don't waste paint. Okay. That looks great. Oh, there's another one. Oh, I, wait. I need paint. Oh, ooh, yes. I love it. Oh, he looks so cute. Okay, so... I was looking at the painting and I'm going to go ahead and paint his little body. He needs a body. I decided to go with black because he's wearing a suit. So I'm just going to go ahead. I still have my little uh, bright filbert and I'm just going to come in here and fill in this area with black.
make sure that I paint the sides just because I'm already here with the black, might as well. First, I'm applying the paint. And once I have it applied, then I'm going to go back over and try to get those brush strokes in there. Okay. There we go. I like that. That's good. Mm-hmm. It works. Okay, so he's got like bones and stuff in his neck. He's got the vertebrae. So I'm going to shoot and then shoot. You know what? I was going to go all in depth with this, but now that I see the basic idea, I kind of think I'm just chilling with that. I like it. Less is more concept, right? Yep. It's good. I like it. I'm going to leave it. Okay. So I got the neck there. Now, uh, let's do the eyes. I'm going to wash my brush really good because I did have the color black on it. So I'm going to make sure that I get all the black off my brush. Okay, so I'm going to go in with that purple and I'm going to add a few drops of water onto into the purple using my brush. And then I'm going to kind of mix a little bit of that purple to make it really like wet and watery. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this acrylic paint and it's going to mimic watercolors. The concept of the idea of watercolors is what we're going for, but we want it to be really loose and watery. I prefer to add water versus uh, gel medium because honestly, for what I'm doing, it's not a lot of paint. So why waste the extra money, right? And buy an extra stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be scared, but I'm going to be brave. And I'm going to just do it and it's going to be super awesome and cool. We're going to come here and I'm going to <sighs> and it happened. Yes, it did. It happened. Let's do the other one. Oh, oh geez, my paint. Oh, I got paint all over me. Don't want to get it on my canvas, it's all wet. Okay. Bravery test. Oh, there we go. Oh, I love it, right? Oh, total 3D-ness. Love it. Coming. It's happening. Okay, so we still have the feathers. Um, still to do the edge and clean that up. Which... Uh, mm, mm. Let's do the hair one more time. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that hair just a little bit. Okay, so it's gonna be darker on the roots and it's gonna get kind of lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead just to make it easier on myself and turn my canvas. 
So I'm not like having to stress out or anything. It just, it is what it is. Okay. And I go back in with some red and I'm going to do a second coat on here. go. I'm going to kind of make these guys where it shoots out a little bit with the strands of hair. I'm going to bring out these, uh, these little lines a little bit more so that way they're not all just being like a square and making a straight line just, you know, kind of going with the flow of the movement of the hair. There we go. Gives it a little tonal look to it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it to the other side and do the same thing. works. I like it. Very toned. Yep. Okay. So from here, let's add a feather to his hat. Now I'm going to go ahead and let's see, let's go with some dark green. I'm going to add, I can, hmm, you know what? Let's be experimental. Yes. Yes. We're going to do it. It's going to be a big experiment. Let's add a tiny bit of black to this green and see what comes up. Did we darken the green? Did we just make some gray? We just dulled the green. That's all we did. Dulled the green.
which could still be cool to give layers. That's like, so now we have like two different greens right here. So that'll be really nice for some layers. But it's not quite the green I had in my brain that I wanted. It's more of a gray green. So we're gonna wash my brush and then I'm gonna go in with um, some dark foresty green called grass green. Put a little bit, I don't need much. Tiny, tiny bit. There we go. So now we've got like three, two different greens, three greens going on right now. I'm gonna go ahead with my liner brush and I'm gonna be super brave and try to see if I can do this all in just one stroke. I go here and and just make a series of dudes and then we'll be good to go. So you gotta make the sound. If you don't make the sound, it doesn't work. I need this turn my canvas so I can do a little bit better. are working out pretty good. I'm thinking maybe I should have made them a little bigger. And do some highlighty green there. Go back over it with some bright green. Let it mix on the palette, on the canvas. Gonna come back in with some darker green. Just work it in and allow them to mix on the canvas. I like it. He works. I'm thinking we should get some yellow in on the mix too. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit and then we'll go back in with some yellow. So I really want to give this guy a little bit of a 3D going on with his background. So I'm going to go ahead and remember how I said we're not using it again? I lied. I decided we're going to use it again. So I'm going to go in with the darker green and do the same thing I was doing just over here on the edges. See what I'm doing? I'm just darkening up the corners and the edges. I'm gonna do that over here. This is gonna be a labor of love. It's gonna take a minute. It's not gonna happen right away. It's gonna take a moment to really get this background to be ha ha ha. But trust me, it's gonna happen if you stick with it and just let it happen. Let it be what it wants to be. Careful with that yellow. I feel like I had this one as too much of a line. I kind of break up that line a little bit.
See how I'm putting textures and a lot of strokes in there? That's what we want. We want a lot of brush strokes. We're texturizing the background and giving the background some oomph. Now see how I did the corners? I'm trying to stick to the corners and the sides. I'm gonna come down the side a little bit. Not a lot. Ah, too dark, too dark. So I'm gonna keep going around and going around all the sides until I'm really happy with what I've got. So just keep working it and it's gonna come, it's gonna happen. Try not to overwork it. You wanna be very sporadic with your brush strokes. I like what I got. I have a couple spots where I felt like I went a little too dark. So I'm gonna go back in with my bright green that I had and try to be very random and go over these dark areas a little bit and just kind of be very sporadic. This is kind of, doing this is gonna kind of let it blend a little bit more, giving the variation of the different colors. I'm almost dry brushing. It's pretty much what I'm doing is dry brushing. Dry brushing and texturizing. Yeah, I like it. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this gray green that I have, just a little. And I'm gonna do just the corners, just a little bit on the corners only. Just give it more of a 3D dark look, very dark look on the corners. Don't add a lot of paint. Dry brushing is when your brush is very dry and you hardly have any paint on your brush at all. And you're just at applying it, and as you're applying it, you're also rubbing it off in the same kind of motion. Less is more. How's it looking? Three day? I think mine's looking pretty good. I like what I got. Yep, background's really coming to life. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash my brush. So I feel like I'm kind of towards the end of this painting. There's a few other little things and little tweaks I wanna do, 
But one of the things I strongly recommend you do, you don't have to do it, but I feel that if you do do this step, it's going to really make everything really pop and be crisp and clear and come together. And that is to touch up the black lines. Some of them we painted over. I'm just going to go ahead and just try to make my, my lines a little straighter and curvier where they need to be. So I'm going to go ahead. I need some extra um, black on my palette here. I'm going to get some fresh black and, and just do another spot. Got my little tiny, I'm going to choose to use my liner brush. I could use a bright filbert, but I'm feeling the liner brush. I'm going to start down here and work my way up. So all these little areas, I'm just going to paint over and get a fresh coat and really sharp lines. And it's really just going to make everything pop. I can see that my paint is still pretty wet in some areas. So what I'm going to do is be very careful that I don't touch the wet paint and smear it. They seem to almost do that in every single one of my paintings. See, I did it again. What did I say? I got, I got my hand all up in that green. Now the bottom of my triangle here on the bow tie, I'm going to make the bottom kind of a little chubby and fat. And then I'm going to try to be careful and not press so hard with the brush and try to see if I can make this line pretty skinny at the top. And this will give uh, depth. didn't work out like I thought it would. <laughs> oh well, happy accident. Okay, there we go. That's cooking cool. I'm going to go ahead and do this next. Ever all the paint's wet, I don't want to put my hand on it. Okay, so that's looking really good. Now here's the piece de resistance. The piece de resistance is if you we go back over where the face is and really sharpen that image out, that's going to make the world of difference to do that face. Trust me. Okay, so he's not quite oval. I need to fix his ovalness a little bit.
There we go. See? Isn't that cool? He really like he pops. Yeah. I like it. Very nice. Let's see, it's coming out. Wow, right? Really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do the hat and because all the paint's wet, I'm going to go ahead and flip them around and really try to sharpen out the edges. I'm really just concerned with the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and do the lines down here just to get that edge really nice and pretty. Be very careful with the yellow. Try to keep those brush strokes, those lines going. This type, the black that I'm using here, it does kind of show up when it dries. Okay, that looks good. Yep. I really, really like it. Ooh, he looks sharp, doesn't he? He looks great. Okay, so mm, let me see. Now is the time of my painting where. I check it out and I'm like, well, is there something I could fix? I was thinking about giving him some little arms here. Yeah, he needs a little arm. I'm gonna go ahead and use the black and give him a little arm. A little bit more thickness in his body. Feel like it makes the bow tie a little bit more anchored. Yeah, let's give him a little bit over here too. Not much, just a little. I'm going to 
do one more thing. Now you can keep going and keep going until you're happy and I'm pretty close to being there. But I'm gonna go ahead and remember that pink that we made at the very, the earlier, when we had that really light color. I mean, I don't have that really light color, but I do have a lighter color. I'm gonna go ahead on the edge of his hair. And just like how I went over here with the red, I'm gonna do that again, but with this pink. And just kind of lighten it up and lighten up the tips and the ends of the hair. The whole most reason why I'm doing this is because there are some areas where I see that the green is kind of showing up and I kind of would like to cover the green that I see. So that's really why I'm doing this so that the hair isn't as see-throughy. I'm going to go back in with some red just really quick to kind of blend it out a little bit. I'm liking that. It's kind of got a, a little bit of a fade going on there. I'm going to do the same with this side of the hair where I'm going to go with the, the lighter pink.
Okay, so now that I did the pink, I'm gonna go back in with some black, or some black, some uh, red, and just try to blend some of it out. we go I'm liking it yeah he's coming along very nicely I think he's good yeah so now's the time in the painting where you look at things and you're like hmm is there anything I could fix I don't quite like that I could do this and I do see a couple little things that I would like to fix I am going to add some yellow which is all dry yellow into my and put a little bit of yellow into my uh, my my feather over here not a lot go. I'm going to kind of smudge these, these this look together right here. I'm going to stipple it. There. That works. Maybe a little bit more yellow. back into the green there we go I like it it works yep don't overwork it yeah so um I think he's good to go I'm looking at him I'm thinking okay well what could I do to fix this guy and honestly not a whole lot I'm gonna wash my brush off I got some white I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna give him a line Right here like it's a fold in the fabric I'm gonna give him another line right here another little fold in the fabric and then I give him give him one right here Kind of dry brushing it a little. I'm gonna give him another one in his hat. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use the hair dryer for a second and dry it really quick.
I'm going to go in with a little bit of white and I'm going to just right on the brim. Yep, give them a little 3D look going on. And I'm going to do it over in the hat too. It's going to go. So this hat's going to got like a shine to it. this up on this side really quick. This is dry brushing. So see how that just gives them kind of like a shine. I'm going to do another little guy down here. There we go. Maybe, uh, hmm. A little bit into the clothes. There we go. There we go. So he's got a little bit in his clothes. He's got in his hat, which I think I might have overdone the brim a little bit, but it's okay. So I have one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead on the hair and I'm going to make this area um, black. So I have a round shape for the face and I'll stand up, look at it from up high. And I like what I got for the face. It's really nice. I think it's working. So now I'm just going to do the hair where I go around a little bit and it's going to be kind of fuzzy and it's really going to make it more 3D. So I'm going to do this looking up a little bit. Gonna pull some of that out. Kind of like a dry brushing. Almost kind of looks like he's getting a little sideburns. I like that. Very fuzzy. Yep. So I'm going to turn it around and do the other side as well.
some of the areas where the hair is kind of coming out in strands, I am going to pull the black up just a little bit that it's a little longer in those areas. I'm going to do that over here too. What? I gotta, sorry, I gotta fix a few things. Hmm, I feel like I got a little too dry brushy in some locations. I don't want to be really dry brushy with this right now. Yeah, I'm liking it. Let's do it. It's kind of how I had it envisioned in my brain. It's doing what I want it to do. I like it. Ooh. So, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. I think he's cool. You know what we could do? To be extra fun, it, uh, I don't know, it's a thing. We could put some splatter marks in there, which could be totally super wow. Or we could stop here. I don't know, splatter dots could be cool. They could. Hmm. I don't know, decisions, decisions. And even if we did do some splatter dots, what color would be super cool? Hmm? The yellow? The white. Hmm. I don't think red. I want to stay, stay away from red. I'm thinking maybe the yellow might be a good little highlighty thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna. I have yellow right here. I'm gonna take my round brush and I really need clean water. Yeah. It's really green dark water. I really should take white clear water. Really lighten it. So I diluted my paint a lot. I'm going to take another one and I'm gonna... yep okay. Maybe I need thicker paint for this one because I'm on the green. So I'm going to flick, 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 flick. Oops, got a little bit too much on his eye there. That's cool, huh? A little 3D-ishness going on. Yeah, I like it. I like that a lot. I think it's cool. Could go back in and flick some white and stuff, but I'm thinking that the yellow is just great.
Yep, I like it. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so now with his eyes, I got some yellow there, and I don't want to have yellow in the eyes. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't know. I do. See, I had that, and I didn't like it. I hated it. But then I got two more. So maybe they balance each other out, and they work. If we wanted to, we could do more colors and splatter all the different colors. But, you know, I think this works. This is cute. It's happening. I like it. Yeah. Totally. I hope you love your painting because I know I do. I really like this guy. He's really super cute. Um, now that I splattered, I'd recommend letting it dry all the way before you pick it up or anything. Uh, but, yeah. Totally cool. I'm digging it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you. And I'm excited to see your painting. I totally want to see your finished piece. Uh, please email it to me or on social media. I've got like all the social media accounts. So just like hashtag me in it and stuff. So that way I'll be able to see it and it'll like, the, they'll like send it over to me so I can see it. Um, so yeah, I will see you on the next one. Bye.